What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to finish out our calculator app with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to work on the functionality of our calculator app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we roughed out the GUI using the PyQt5 designer. So we built all this stuff, but it didn't really do anything. We worked on the C button to clear the screen, but we didn't do anything with any of the other buttons. So in this video, we're gonna make this actually work. We'll see, we have six plus four equals 10. We could put a decimal in there. If we click it again, nothing else happens. Uh, we can make this positive or negative. We can go back like that. And uh, we can divide by two, negative five, all the things. And so that's what we're gonna do in this video. So head back over to our Sublime Text Editor. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the other PyQt5 playlist videos. There's a bunch of videos there. If you haven't seen them yet, check that out. And you'll also find last week's video where we built the first part of this app in that playlist as well. So check that out if you haven't seen it already. So let's come down here and you can see in the last video, we created this press it function. And we said if pressed is C. So if we click the C button, then we wanna do this. So we put this if statement inside this press it function and all of the buttons in our calculator call this press it function. So I don't think I wanna keep doing that. I don't wanna have a bunch of if statements in here. Instead, we're just gonna create different functions for different buttons on their own. So let's define one. I'm going to call this one dot it, <laughs> right? And we want to pass in self. And that's good for now. And let's head back up here and find the dot button. So I'm just going to come to the very top, hit control F on my keyboard. You see, we get this little search function. And then I'm going to search for quotation marks, period. And there we see it right there. So instead of calling press it, let's call dot it. And we don't have to actually pass anything in here because we know we're pressing the dot button on the calculator. So we don't need to determine which button, which button we're pressing. This will be the only button that calls this function, right? So, okay, so we've got that. Now let's come down here and let's work out our dot it function. So what is this? What do we want to do with this? Well, whenever somebody clicks the dot, we, we know they're trying to make a decimal number. So if you typed 10.5, you want 10.5. Right now, if we press the dot button, it will keep putting a dot every time we press it. So if we put 10.6.4. Point point whatever, it will just keep doing that forever. And that's not what we want. We only want one dot at a time, right? So let's create a variable. I'm just gonna call it screen. This is what we've already typed onto the screen, right? And that's just gonna be whatever this text currently is. All right, so let's go output label text. And that will equal screen. So now we can just go if there is a dot in screen, then we want to pass. There's already a dot there. Else, we want to output a dot at the end. So we can come down here and let's sort of grab one of these where we're outputting something onto the screen. And we'll just come back up here and paste this guy in. So here we want to set the output label set text to here we can get rid of all of this. And we could just put screen and then a period. We use our F string here. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it and see if this works. So let's run python calc.py. And here we see 89.3. If we hit point again, I'm clicking it now, nothing's happening. Well, that works okay, but now if we go plus, 32, and we want to put another point, that doesn't work, right? So this sort of works, but not quite. So let's head back to the drawing board. So what we can do is treat this string as if it's a Python list. And then we can say, hey, what's the last character? What's the last thing, the last item in our Python list? If it's a period, don't do anything. If it's not, add a period. So we can just do that by calling screen and then negative one. Negative one is the, the last thing of a list. So we could say, let's get rid of this. Instead of this, we can go if screen negative one equals a period, then do nothing. Otherwise, do that. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see how that looks. 
So we can run this and let's go 89.3 plus 23.4 plus 23.5. And that seems to work. But now if we go point on here again, that's still a problem. So this is going to take a little bit more work, but I'm going to leave this as it is for now. I'm going to give you the challenge to try and fix that on your own. See so if you can leave a comment below if you can figure out a good way to do this. If nobody can figure out, I'll talk about how to do it in the next video. But I'm going to leave this for now because we've got a lot of other buttons to do. So now let's do this one right here. This is the back button. We want to remove one character at a time when we click this button. So let's head back over to our code and let's come up here and I should comment here uh, add a decimal. And here let's go uh, remove character. And so let's go define remove underscore it. And we want to pass in self. And let's come up here again and control F. And let's just search for those two arrows. So instead of press it, let's call remove it. And we don't need to pass anything. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. So again, let's grab whatever's in there. So let's say grab what's on the screen already. Comment that here. So here we just want to remove the last item and we could do the same sort of thing that we did down here. So let's go screen equals screen. And then here we want to use the slice operator and then we want to remove the last item on the list. So oops, we need a screen there. So let's comment this remove last item in we'll call this list, but it's technically slash a string, but we're treating it like a list because you could do that with Python. And so we're just removing the last thing. So now we just need to output back to the screen. And we could just come down here and grab any one of these guys here. And let's put this back. But instead of this, we want to output screen. Okay, so that looks like it should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it and see. So we can go 89 and then click back. Boom, the nine gets removed. Seven, five, four, remove the four, the five, the seven, and then the eight. Okay, so that seems to work. So what else do we got? We've got plus minus. So with this, what we want to do is say we've got 89. We want to turn this into negative 89 when we click this button. Or if it's negative 89, we want to turn it to positive 89. So let's do that. So let's go change from positive slash negative. So let's define plus underscore minus underscore it. <laughs> we want to pass in self. And again, I'm going to come up here to the top and control F to search and we can just search for a slash. There we go. Plus slash minus. So instead of this, we want it to be what do we call this plus dash minus. I think did we call this? Yeah. And so let's get rid of this. We don't need to actually pass it anything. All right. So here, how do we want to do this? Well, again, let's grab whatever whatever's on the screen so we can do that. So let's just determine if it's already a negative number or not. So let's go if I don't know, say minus in screen, if that's already there, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to output something. So let's come down here and grab this. And now if it's already minus, we want to remove the minus. So how do we do that? Well, we can go screen dot replace. And we want to replace the minus with nothing. Right? So this is a very simplistic way of doing this, we're gonna have the same problem, basically that we had with the dot thing. Again, I'll let you play with that sort of uh, figure out how to fix that. But for now, this will work. Otherwise, if there isn't one, right, we want to put one. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it see if it works. Okay, so 89. Now we want to make this negative boom, there it's negative. So if we want to then add 23, right, that should work. Now again, the same problem we're going to have is 89 minus and if we wanted to, for instance, uh, subtract negative 32. Well, see, it took out all those minuses. So it's probably not what you want. But this is not a very sophisticated calculator at this point. For now, we're going to leave it like that. Again, play around with this, see if you can find a solution to that one solution would just be to 89 negative, if you wanted to use a minus number, you would just go minus. 32 that seems to work. But again, if you do that, boom, it gets rid of all of those. So I'm gonna leave that to you to play around with see if you can fix that. 
If you guys can't do it, or if you guys want me to dive into this even deeper and make this a more sophisticated calculator, let me know in the comment section below and we will. But for this video, we're just gonna fly through and fix all these, the basic functionalities for all these buttons just right off the bat. So, okay, this works, 89, this works, the dot works, the plus minus works, these two sort of work. Now we need the equal to button to work. So let's do that. Oh, let's come back over here and let's say, uh, let's, let's do some math. <laughs> right? So let's define math it. And we want to pass in self. And let's come up here again and control F to search for, uh, let's see, we want the equal to sign. So quotation equal to, there it is. So instead of calling press it, we want to call math it. And again, we don't really need to pass that. So there's lots of different ways you could do this. Let's come back down here. And what we want to do is first off, grab whatever's on the screen. Now let's create a variable just called answer. And I want this to be, we want to evaluate whatever screen is. And the eval function, oh, I misspelled eval. The eval function in Python will take a string of things with number signs in it and evaluate it. So if you have five plus two, it will look at that. Notice there's a plus sign, figure out that means add, and it will add the two numbers. It's a great little function. It's built right into Python. It'll do everything for us. So now we can just, let's say, uh, do the math. Now we can just output the answer to the screen. So we come down here and uh, let's come down here. Let's see, what do we want? We can grab any of these. And here, let's output answer to the screen. And so this will be answer. Now, this will turn the answer into a number. And this thing by default needs to be a string. So we need to wrap this whole thing in a string function to convert it back from an integer back from a number to a string. So that will go ahead and work. So let's come down here and run this guy and see if that did the trick. So we could do eight plus two, click equal, boom, 10. Seems to work. Let's go times two equals 20 divided by four equals 5.0. You can notice it turned it into a decimal. That always happens with Python when you divide. And uh, all right, seems to work. Now, if we click this button and click equal to, uh oh, we get an error. So we didn't do the percentage button and I'm not gonna do the percentage button because this video is getting a little long, but we can make sure that if we have errors, we can account for them. So let's put all of this math in a try loop. So we can go try and then accept and then put this output, let's call this error to the screen. And here we can pass in, let's say a little message that says error. All right, so let's go ahead and save this, run this. So this is just a basic try except loop, it's a Python thing. We can come back over here, run this guy one more time. So now if we type in eight percentage and click the equal to sign, it says error. Okay, that works. Again, I'm not gonna do the percentage button because we're running low on time. Maybe we'll do that in a future video. In this video, I just wanted to get the basic functionality and I think we've got that. So there's a couple of little things that still need some work. So if we go eight, 9.3 plus 2.7 point, we get an error. Yeah, we do, we get an error. So that's a problem. Otherwise, we can go 5.3 plus two, that still works. We can positive and negative this. So if we went uh, 10 negative plus five, that should be negative five. Boom, it is negative five, that seems to work. But again, we have issues here if we go negative five minus six, and then we wanna try and turn this six into a negative. So we want minus minus six, which is a positive, which you could do normally. But if you do that, boom, it gets rid of all the, the minus signs. So you might wanna fix that. Or again, like I said, if enough people want me to work on that, I'll do that. But all in all, very quickly, we've got this calculator doing basic functionality plus uh, 64, boom, 120, and it's looking pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. 
name is John Elder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.